Today I have Dell's brand new 16 inch mobile workstation which is otherwise known as the Precision 5680. This sits between the top of the range 7000 series but in my opinion this is the better buy. Find out why later. I'll be reviewing and covering the topics on screen now and giving you the benchmark results as well as putting the entry level A1000 GPU through some games. Let's begin with the unboxing. You have a box inside a box and we have the laptop here inside this fabric cover. We will pop that to a side and have a look at the accessories. So we have the manuals here and underneath we have the power adapter which is 165 watts. And here we have a USB-C to USB-A adapter. And in this compartment we have the 3 pin to UK plug. Now let's take a closer look at the laptop. You're presented with the usual mirrored Dell logo on the lid. It looks almost like the Apple space grey colour. In the light you can see a glittery shimmer and it's made from aluminium so it does feel and look premium. Underneath you have the model number and it's raised here at the front and also the back with rubber feet. You have this large vent here for cooling and just underneath the screen here you have a large cooling vent. On the inside, well for starters it's not a one finger opening lid. This is finished in a matte black and unlike the Precision 5570 this does not have any carbon which I personally liked in that model. Overall the design in my opinion looks professional and very much understated depending on the spec you get. It's a wolf in sheep's clothing, but this is the common theme for the Dell business range and that is probably the consensus for most people who buy this. If you want in your face design then you can look at Dell's Alienware range. The full specification of the laptop in today's review is on screen now. The display on this review model is a 16 inch Full HD Plus anti-glare panel with a resolution of 1920 by 1200 at 60Hz. It has a 500 nit brightness level which is bright and will work well in bright rooms. There is a bezel around 5mm thick running around the outside. It would have been nice for it to be edge to edge. On the Dell's website you also have the option to opt for no camera and mic option. But for £56 it's worth getting that camera and microphone which has a DCI P3 colour palette so colours will be very accurate and it's great for content creators, graphic and web designers. Now if you wanted the best screen they offer an OLED 4K touch that's 400 nits and it has the best colour accuracy but it is a £516 option. If you're going to be working on the laptop screen then in my opinion this is the screen to go for. However, if you're planning on working in an office then you can easily buy a 4K 27 inch screen for around £300 and dock your laptop with this docking station that I reviewed here. This would be the cheaper option and over time you can add two additional screens and your other accessories giving you the perfect workspace for productivity. You can select from a 13th gen i5 up to an i9 processor. This model has a 13th gen i7 13850HX with 30 megabytes of cache, 28 threads, 20 cores and a clock speed of 2.2 gigahertz running up to 5.3 gigahertz which will be more than adequate to run most applications. I'll provide some benchmark results later. On to memory, you can configure up to 64 gigabytes of DDR5 running at 6000 megahertz with only the i7 and i9 processors. Just bear in mind that the body of the laptop will change depending on the memory size and I'm assuming it may get more chunkier. I'll be checking later whether the memory can be upgraded. This model has 32 gigabytes which for me as a content creator is more than enough. Onto storage you can select from a 256 gigabyte M2 NVMe SSD up to 4 terabytes and you also have an additional NVMe slot where you can can select up to 4 terabytes at cost. With the second disc there are RAID options so giving this model a potential of 8 terabytes of storage. If you're planning on editing 4K videos then you may want to opt for the larger size SSD. Again I'll be looking later whether this is upgradable. It comes with an Intel Wi-Fi 6C AX211 card and Bluetooth. Onto the GPU. You have a choice of these GPUs and we have the RTX A1000 here with 6 gigabytes of GDDR memory. This is the entry level discrete graphics. I mean that will be absolutely fine running Adobe Premiere and doing 4K videos as I work on a 6 year old precision and it works fine. So really this selection is down to what you're going to use it for. If it's purely gaming then the 4090 is the obvious choice. But this laptop and range is designed for professionals so I can only assume most will configure the professional GPUs. And if you're going to choose the 4090 then there are loads of consumer models available with this option which will be much cheaper than paying those business range premiums. And on the subject of 
of graphics, let's see how well this GPU games. On Call of Duty Warzone, settings are set to quality. We are getting mid 40 frames per second. The processor is around 20 to 35% utilization. GPU is up at 95 to 99% utilization, but it's drawing only 35 watts of power. GPU temp is 55 degrees. The cooling fans are much quieter than what I expected, but I suspect the vapor chamber is doing a great job of getting rid of that heat from the rear exhaust. The game is running smooth and the graphics look great. On recommended settings, the frame rate has increased and we are hitting over 60 frames in areas. GPU utilization remains the same and so does GPU temp. I have compared the graphics side by side and you do have less detail in recommended, but it's difficult to tell. The game looks great still and the increase in FPS makes it more playable. The next game is Counter Strike and yes, it's an old game, but I expect it to do well. So we are setting the graphics preset to very high, which is its highest setting. We are getting upwards of 80 frames per second, hitting over 100 FPS in areas. CPU is barely being utilized, reaching up to 25% usage. GPU is at 99% utilization and the GPU temps are around 54 degrees. The great thing about this laptop is its docking capability. You could run games at higher resolution and higher refresh rates using an external monitor and you aren't restricted to the monitor resolution and refresh rate. The final game is PUBG and this is my first time playing this game. The settings are set to high and we're getting over 70 frames per second and reaching into the 90s. CPU usage is around 20% and the GPU utilization is mid to high 90s. The game graphics look good and it's playing smoothly. Switching it up to ultra settings, the FPS has dropped to mid 40s to mid 50s. CPU usage has increased and hitting 30% usage. So to summarize, these games are not CPU intensive with the exception of Call of Duty. The GPU is doing rather well. It's hitting 60 FPS in Call of Duty. On PUBG, we are getting over 60 frames per second in high and the game ran smooth with no jerking or signs of GPU struggling. All classic like Counter-Strike, we are reaching over 100 frames per second. Although these GPUs are not designed for gaming, they're more than capable, even this entry level discrete graphic. I have dedicated a video here showing the gaming capability of the A2000, which is an option on this laptop, so check out that video after. You get a 6 cell 100 watt hour battery as standard. It's a long life cycle with a 3 year warranty at zero extra cost. So what does that relate to in the real world? Well I use PC Mark 10 battery benchmark and on the modern office profile, I was able to achieve a time of almost 14 hours, which is measured by a balance of writing, web browsing and video conferencing tasks, which is separated by short periods of idle. I mean, this is great, but once you start using that discrete GPU, the battery life goes down. On the gaming profile, you will get around an hour and a half, which is great. If you have an hour meeting where you're presenting, and utilizing the GPU. This will be fine, but doing general work, expect that to be four to six hours, maybe longer. It's difficult to measure as it depends on the application. On to weight, the laptop I have here with the RTX A1000 weighs in at 2.77 kilograms. It can be held with one hand fairly easily and will not be a concern if you're moving between meetings or putting it in hand luggage to travel. Overall, that three year warranty on the battery is great and the weight isn't uncomfortably heavy. On to connectivity, on the left side you have the HDMI port, a headphone jack, two Thunderbolt 4 ports and an optional smart card reader. Over on the right you have a full size SD card slot and you have a USB-C port and a lock slot. As mentioned during the unboxing, you get a USB-C to USB-A adapter. This seems to be the direction most manufacturers are going, but in my opinion, it would be nice to have a 3.2 Gen 2 USB port, at the very least, as these adapters can be lost. Other than that, if you wanted more connections, then your best options is to consider docking stations. It has a standard backlit keyboard. The keys have a small amount of travel. It does feel nice and comfortable, similar to the other precision models I've reviewed. Texture wise, it feels smooth with a matte texture and is very quiet. Here is how it sounds. It does have a fairly large glass buttonless mouse pad with multi gesture. Pushing down on the click pad, there is a subtle click. Have a listen. The palm rest has the same feel as the keys and feels comfortable when you have your palms rested on it. So I'm sure you won't have any issues with working on this for long periods of time. It's got a full HD 1080p camera with no camera shutter. Yes, you heard that. It doesn't have a privacy shutter. Just the thought of someone watching unnerves me. And before the introduction of camera privacy shutters, I used tape. So I welcome privacy shutters, but no shutter. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Here how the camera looks within the camera app.
you have four speakers, two above the keyboard and two under the laptop pointing down. This shares the same speakers as some of the other Dell Precision models and let me tell you it's one of the best I've heard from a laptop. With some great bass, excellent for presenting with, watching YouTube, Netflix and even gaming as you heard earlier. I'll play some royalty free music at 50% volume. Now 100%. This has express signing with Windows Hello, which is absolutely, in my opinion, one of the recent game changing features and allows you to sign in with your face and your face isn't something you forget. It saves time, just be sure you type your password in so you don't forget it. It locks upon walking away so your work stays safe. If you're looking away, the screen darkens, which also helps to save battery life. Taking off the bottom is a simple task. Just unscrew the eight screws and I use a flat plastic tool on the smart card reader slot to pry it open. Just a gentle twist and work your way around the laptop. Here you have the primary SSD and here is a second SSD which I've noticed has started to label them now. I am looking for the memory but I can't seem to find it so that tells me it's not upgradable which is a bit of a shame. Other than that all this here cools the laptop down and I think it does a great job. Here we have some benchmark results using the following benchmark packages. In summary, it scores very well. The CPU has some excellent multi-core scores. This model with the RTX A1000 comes in at £2,434 flat included and the same spec is $2,955 on the US Dell website. So for those that are not familiar with the business range, you are paying the premium for better driver compatibility for the components but more importantly for the GPU which tend to perform better in engineering applications rather than for gaming. You have better build quality better warranty options so parts are usually available for longer also not forgetting the ISF independent software vendor certification which ensures the high performance applications that may run on the laptop run smoothly so, so what's the final verdict should you avoid it should you shortlist it or should you go ahead and buy it I would buy it it's a very capable laptop and this one with the entry level discrete graphics is more than enough to cater for content creators, graphic and web designers. I use a Precision 3000 series with a 9th gen processor, 16 gigabytes of memory and an old Nvidia Quadra GPU and it runs well in Premiere and Photoshop. A 10 minute 4K export just takes a few minutes. My only issue is it struggles with my two 27 inch 1440p screens. This 5680 will have no issues with its more modern GPU. In fact using the WD 22 TB4 dock you can run four 4k screens but keep in mind if you go for a more higher gpu then you may need the wd19 dcs which runs more power i've reviewed the top of the line 7000 series and i would go for this model if i knew it can run the same gpus and it will cost less because it doesn't have a 17 inch screen but with the capability of docking it you don't need high resolution screens unless you are working from the laptop itself and on the subject of docking station if you do buy one of these then consider watching my review of these two docking stations that is compatible with this model. The Precision 5570 is also one to consider. It's end of life and it looks like Dell started doing the 15 inch displays in the 3000 range which doesn't offer as many graphics options as the 5000 range and the 5000 range seems to only have the 16 inch displays. You could probably pick them up on the second hand market at lower prices. I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did please give it a like. If you drop a comment with the word Precision then I know you stayed to the end and I will give you a thumbs up. Thank you for watching.